Friday night, I want a chippy tea. Chippy tea, chippy tea, I want a chippy tea. Oh, you keep giving me posh, no, she don't agree with me. I don't want lobster thermidor with a raspberry coulee. It's Friday night, I'm within me rights, I want a chippy tea. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. <laughs> I turned up to Florida, and the first guy that walked in to the seminar we did was, hey, Chippy T. No way. Unbelievable. Really? <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, okay, so do you listen? And yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, first couple of weeks, I didn't quite understand what you were saying, but after that, I've got it now. Chewing into it, don't you? <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that, Tony? Because I, I didn't quite <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, listen, you're gonna you're gonna struggle because I actually do do change my how I speak when I'm over there. And now I'm with mm. Danny, that that's got no chance, lad. Yeah. No. Same thing happens when I go back to Minnesota. Don't you, you know? Like, I, right back. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, go for it, Tony. So here we go. Are we ready? Yes. Oh, what episode is it? Do you know? Not a fucking. Clue. I, why did it feel like it was like months ago that we recorded? 55, really maybe? Track. I think it was months ago when we recorded. No, How bad is it? Honest. Bryce knows and we don't. He is right as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm checking yeah, yeah. right now. Just yeah, just just a warning that when you've got glasses on, we can see what's on your screen. So no more granny dwarf porn, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would be 55 if you don't count the shop tour. Right, okay. <clears throat> no, we don't yeah, count the true. shop tour. You're welcome. Mm, that was a bonus. Hey, I really enjoyed that, Bryce. That was really good. I appreciate it. Tony's microphone skills need some work, but otherwise, yes. otherwise, absolutely flawless. Also, when you're holding your camera, Tony, just do that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It'll fill the whole screen up. Never thought. Never thought at all. I know. No matter. <laughs> People you know, know to expect it rough and ready. Steve at SPSI tells me exactly the same thing. It's all great, but it's in portrait mode. All right. Okay. <laughs> right. So <clears throat> here we go. <sighs> Welcome to episode 55 of the Chippy Tea podcast. What is the Chippy Tea podcast? I hear you all asking all in once. Um, it is your chance to catch up with a regular, I'd like to say weekly, but I'm going to go regular regular video call between me, Tony P from Palm Print, and Danny Day, Flippin' Sweet Print Co. And this week, we're joined by a special guest, which is Bryce with Merch Ops in Florida. There we go. Look, you see? Wink, wink. Wink, wink. We'll even get him, get him doing a wink next year. Um, so Bryce has joined us. Uh, <laughs> Bryce has joined us from Florida. Um to to catch up on what has been a crazy week because I've been with Bryce this week. I'm still in Florida, but just about 100 miles away from him. Um, and we're going to have a bit of a catch up with some uh, some questions relating to screen print. No guarantee, you know, we do wander off a little bit. We are we are known as the tangent twins. We can we can <laughs> wander off on on strange tangents now and again. But as is the true tradition, and Bryce, you get to see this live. The fear Ooh. that creeps into <laughs> Danny's eyes when when I ask him, "What's they been doing this week, lad?" Well, I, I thought I'd get away with it because we've got a guest on. No, I thought I'd switch it. Yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can show you not what I'm doing this week, what I'm literally doing. I've just I've just broke away from the press, turned all the dryers off, etc. But uh, I've done about twelve shirts so far out of hundred. Uh, six colour job. Six? Where's your six in there? I know, it's very tonal. Greys and like an off... I don't know if the camera's picking it up, I'll be great, but... The wiring... So obviously you've got white underbase, and then there's a grey, then there's like a creamy colour, then there's a tint of blue, um, then there's orange and red. Okay, talk us through it then. Base white, what mesh? We know, oh, it's all the, 90s. we know it's Aquaflex V2. Yeah, that's right. All 90s. So you put Aquaflex. your base on a 90, so that's a 230, Bryce. Yeah, 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 because it's after it's a after on same process type of thing. Like I wanna... Who did it? John. Uh, yeah, of course. 
Do you, okay. want, do you want to do the separations? So um, the most likely 55 to, or 45? Oh, 55. 55. Yeah. Pretty much everything so is 55. 55 line count, 90, 230 mesh. Yep. Aquaflex V2 underneath, which is a water yep. soft white, and Platisol on top. Yep. International coatings on top. International um, coatings, 7600 Ultra Mix series, yeah? Mix, yeah. mix your own colours. Yeah, yeah. So each colour is mixed yeah. to match. When I got separation through, um, I mixed the colours as John sort of laid out. I then there was one of them I tweaked and I changed. Um, nine, nine times out of 100 jobs, nine times out of 100? 99 times out of 100 jobs, it gets the colours spot on. But on this, I just made a slight change on this one. Um, it was like a like a creamy colour, which he had a fluorescent yellow. And I could understand his thinking because it was a uh, fluorescent yellow is quite transparent. Yeah. So actually when it sat on top of the white, it didn't look like a fluorescent yellow. It, it had like a, quite a soft look to it. Mm. I decided to try treating that screen as a spot colour. So I literally mixed the colour. Rather than trying to sim process it, I mixed the spot colour that I needed and put that in the screen. But you are um, flashing in between each colour, so that probably yeah, works better for you. Yeah, yeah. There's no mixing of colours. Um, no. I thought about trying to limit the amount of flashes. So obviously the white would need flashing. And then I could run it. But I could probably run maybe all of the colours apart from red and orange at the end. Because they're more, they're more, they're more of a spot colour. You know, that's like solid text. So I would feel yeah, better you could get away flashing with pulling, them too. Pulling your squeegee short though, couldn't you? I guess... I guess you could. Just makes it a bit more awkward, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's not, yeah, if it's flash, you could, yeah. 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 But anyway, I'm okay with it. I'm happy with it. Have you thought about using water base white yet, Bryce? I've got a gallon. Oh, oh is it, really? Is it Aquarius? Yeah. yeah. Not, not so No, uh, Aquaflex. Your oh, favourite. Right. Whatever it is. You've got Aquaflex? Still, yeah. 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 I, we haven't really messed with it yet. Uh, we've we should been, have said while I were there, we could have played with uh, while no, I was there. Uh, we've just been too damn busy. Yeah. We haven't really had busy. time to test. And quite honestly, you you were here for a week and a half, and I haven't gotten a fucking thing done. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking far behind it. So. I'm going to be here on Saturday just trying to get it up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. You don't care. No. I'm here no. to help. <laughs> <laughs> so have you done any water based printing in the past before at all? Ever? Uh no. We 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 played with it a little bit, the the white that we've got, but just briefly, uh just on some merch op shirts, not this, this is just directly on the shirt, but we played with it a little bit. We don't have the emulsion for it. No. Um so we're not really set up. We want to, it's just finding the time. Yeah. Why, yeah. why do you want to? Um, quite honestly, you guys, and, and Danny in particular, printing plastisol on top, uh, and having great success at it because we're plastisol. And if I can, if I can get a slightly softer print, uh, with the same look, I, I want to give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. It won't That's work exactly my reason. Well. The reason I ask is <clears throat> I've been in your shop for, for 10 days and the, the prints that come off. They are of a good quality and a soft feel anyway. So I, I'm i unsure of the big leap that you'd get from going from plastisol under base to water-based under base. You, there would absolutely be a difference, <clears throat> but because... You have a hot, a hot head, though, don't you? So that... Yeah, iron. Iron right now. They use uh, a roller. Yeah. All uh, right, right. So that but will soften out the base anyway quite a bit, I imagine. Well, what softens out their base is mesh selection, blade selection, and, and on-press parameters. They're, they're really keen on not squashing the white into the fabric, not putting shitloads of base down, using a high mesh base. Um, <clears throat> we recently did a seminar there, and I can still hear the gasps as when we print the base white and we press halfway so you can see so everybody can see what the base white looks like with 
single stroke, high mesh count, normal plastisol that they can buy. And when it comes out, it like everybody goes, oh, is yeah, that, right. Is that one hit? Uh, and and it, it's. I often say this time and time again. It's not just the mesh selection. It's not just the coating technique. It's not just the squeegee. It's not just the press parameters. It's not just the ink. But it's the combination of those which give yeah. us uh, marginal gains. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, it's yeah. You're right. It's all of those things combined. Um, yeah. You know, for like a for a low bleed under a base, we use uh, Rutland Premier primarily. That's premier it's, for you and me. Yeah. <laughs> we did some Street Fighter low bleed. Uh, it's not bad, but I think we like the Premiere better, and it's got a bit more of a plasticky feel. So upping the up in the mesh count uh, and making some other adjustments gives us gives us a, I think a smoother print than a lot of people might get with it. Mm. Mm. So, I guess the I guess it's a little bit down to. Uh, intuitively, you just want to smash that into the shirt, and it's all very, uh, um, very you know, forcing the ink through the screen. But actually, if you use a bit of finesse and if you choose the correct parameters, um, and smoothing the ink over the top of the shirt rather than smashing it into the contours, yeah, this is where you're getting you're improving your opacity and you're getting a smoother surface to apply right. top colors on top of. And using you a shirt, a, you want to be a consultant. <laughs> Danny, you're fantastic. I know, I've yeah. too many years. <laughs> Either that or I'm I... I'm overqualified. I, you've listened to me for that long, it's just become automatic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just all right at this printing game, you know. <laughs> it's time to sink in. <laughs> Finally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sinking in with me too, and I think a lot of other people, so... It's... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes to... But now you've got the press that will allow you to apply finesse uh yeah. a lot of people we've talked about in the past uh you might buy i mean I, I this is relevant to me a little bit because i'm looking at used autos right now and i can look at the option of getting a an older mnr and it's air driven but at that point there's no real room for me to use finesse because i'm gonna have to smash that ink in with the air compressor there's no real control it's like Whereas you've got the electronics and uh, you know all singing, dancing, smooth operation of an MHM, yeah. which is going to just glide it over. I, I don't, I don't, I think a used M and R all air is not a horrible idea. Um, that's how this shop kind of started. They had a chameleon, a six color. It was before I started, and when I started, they had the Diamondback all air Diamondback. Right. It was an eight color, and they were printing seven color jobs with one flash wet on wet and, yeah well wow. and it was it was hard for them i mean they struggled but they learned a hell of a lot on on how to make adjustments on press and with the art and etc to get a good looking print yeah i don't know i think it was a good learning experience for them um, sometimes the struggle is so valuable because that's where you learn learn the most yeah uh so i see what you're saying um I mean, so, I just have to go through that. It's like a rite of passage. You have to yeah. go through that uh, that shite. And I've used the the gauntlets and the chameleons, um, air driven, horrible things held together with uh, with zip ties and brown tape. Um, <clears throat> some of them I think needed a priest more than a technician. But um, <laughs> they definitely they, they definitely make you hone your craft, especially when you've only, yeah. only got one flash. You know, in the early days, we I mean, didn't. The machine came with one flash. You couldn't buy another. That was it. So you you, you had to learn how to do it. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. as we get more flashes, we don't have to. I would never pass up if you had the choice between uh, a servo or air. I wouldn't do air. But yeah. you know, if, if air is your only option, I wouldn't not get an auto because it's air. Yeah. Right now, that's kind of what I've been doing. To be honest, I've passed up on a couple of presses that are air driven in the hope that something with an electric head comes up later down the line. But at a certain point, maybe, you know, to, if it if we start getting towards Christmas, I might start being a little less patient. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, I just need to get shirts out of the door multiple times faster than what I currently can do. Mm -hmm. um, so... That's we'll, we'll, six, no, six colour job behind you. 
So the six colour job on a hundred shirts, how long have you allocated press time for that? Oh that's this day's gone. This day's day. gone now. One day. Yeah, yeah. I'll be I'll be here till maybe six or seven o'clock tonight. Oh. And then it'll be done. And Bryce, how how long will you allocate it? Six colour hundred shirts. Yeah, I don't know. The uh, setup is about a minute per screen. Maybe a little more. Uh, it's, you know, depends on the operator and if everything's ready for them. Print time, I mean, we're printing, you know, a six color job, depending on the, like that size print, uh, we'll probably print 500 an hour, 550 an hour. So I, I do the math. I can't, I need a calculator to do that. Well, it's, it's 10, minutes. Half an 10, hour. 10 minutes printing. Yeah. Uh, six to eight, 10 minutes setting up. Um, that's it, really, isn't it? Really, yeah. five minutes breakdown. So yeah. 10, 20, 25 yeah. minutes. Wow. <clears throat> And we have a lot wow. of those jobs. I mean, a lot of them. So we need to we need to be able to turn them pretty quick. Hmm. Uh, once you get your shit figured out on press and you kind of know what to do, then things are a lot smoother. But it took a while. I mean, uh, uh, every different brand we've had has been a learning curve. So yeah, let's not forget they're only new to MHM, Danny. Yeah, yeah. I uh, well, I won't call it. You had a uh, you had a, you had a green presses before. I'm a, I'm a, I'm yeah, yeah, they had a rock. Yeah, I'll just call them out. Yeah, you can't, you, you can't mention. <laughs> I won't call them out, fine. but I'll just say <laughs> the green. Yeah, we, I think we, we, it started on M and M and R, did you? Yeah, right. Well, can we can we rewind a little bit, go to the beginning, and can I ask you how you got started, and how is upholstery upholstering furniture? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> that was yeah. Furniture was my previous life. Uh, Back in the mid eighties, I started working for a waterbed company in San Diego. A lot of people in the States that are older will know it, Sun Valley Waterbeds. And I worked my way up in the ranks there and then that place went belly up. So I ended up moving to uh, Maryland to work with another waterbed company. Uh, and the waterbed industry was changing a lot, uh, but I stayed up there for about 19 years. I had my own uh, couple of futon stores, selling futons. Oh, wow. Always picking the shit industries from furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Waterbeds, futons, and screen printing, they're all on a level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not into an easy life then. <laughs> no. I moved down here uh, from Maryland. I moved down to Florida in 2010. Might have been late 2009. Long story, but we came down on a boat. I won't get into it because I could talk about it for hours. Uh, yeah, I've always dabbled. I lived on a boat <laughs> for a while. And I've always, for my own companies, I've always built websites and done graphics and I've always been interested in it. And I somehow talked my way into a job working for a heat transfer company down here, which, which is a shithole <clears throat> and they're still around. And I, I, I don't think about them often, no. uh, but I lied my way in and I learned some stuff just enough to get an interview with this company. I was in 2013. And I really didn't know shit. I didn't, I mean, I was doing four color process separations and some art creation for a really crappy company. Uh, barely scratched the surface. So I lied my way into here. I came in for an interview. He didn't even let me in the building. We stood outside. He liked it. Oh. He liked he it. Liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Mike kept me outside the building, talked to me for about two or three minutes and said, yeah, you know, we'll take you on part time. And huh. I wasn't really happy at the other place. Uh, so I just, I just started coming in full time because they needed help anyway, but they always run, we always run a little lean, leaner than I'd like to. Um, right. and I've kind of learned on the fly. Uh, I watched a shit ton of videos, uh, did a lot of self tutorials, uh, and just, you know, on the weekends, I would just, all I would do is separate stuff just to learn how to separate stuff. Uh, and it morphed into running the whole shop. So, and was that in a short space of time, like a couple of years? Or well, I've been here for ten, uh, a little over ten, ten and a half years. And I would say within a year and a half, I oh. was, I was kind of running production and doing all the art. Uh, I did embroidery when we brought embroidery in house. I was the embroidery guy, so I can run every machine in here. But I tell Tony, you know, jack of all, master of none. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at most of them. Not perfect. Yeah, but... yeah. In a shop your size, you have to be. Because 
you have to fill the holes when they appear. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you know you have to solve the problems as well so, and it's the age-old problem I will ask you to do something that I can't do myself uh, and when it comes down to fixing it it's going to fall to me you know you turn around there's there's nobody behind you <laughs> you know oh, shit it's me yeah. <laughs> so we yeah don't have, uh, we don't have a mechanic on staff either so if something goes wrong Mike and I are out there uh, wrenching on stuff trying to fix it so Mike's that kind of guy though Mike, Mike will try and fix things and, and buy all the best gear. And, you know, you you ask for a screwdriver and you walk over and there's a big snap on line of every screwdriver you could possibly imagine. <laughs> and, it's, it, and it's got Bryce's label on it. <laughs> yeah. Bryce, Bryce is a label guy, which I really like. Everything has to have a label on it. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. All nice and organized. It's, it sounds like, Bryce, you must have a keen eye for detail and uh, details matter. And I assume this is where... When you took on this new role at Merch Shops ten years ago, it was that keen eye for detail, um, research and understanding that you could rapidly become, you know, running a place in a short space of time. Yeah. As opposed to somebody who, you know, might take a bit longer to get there. Yeah, I don't I mean I don't I'm not one to toot my own horn, but I I do I learn shit pretty quick. I've got a kind of yeah. a logical mind. Uh, I'm not super creative, so on the art side, I'm I'm really I I got hired as an artist, but I'm, I was really a production artist, which is color separation, yeah. uh, stealing shit off of stealing clip art off of the internet and mashing it together and creating reproduction you know, artist. You're a reproduction, reproduction artist. artist. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not a creative guy. Uh, never have been, but I've always loved to tinker with it, and I love the mechanics of it, uh, and I also like. Uh, increasing efficiencies and trying to find ways to make things better. And I've got kind of a logical mind that thinks that way. Uh, yeah, I think that, that for me works really well. I, I often put people into, into print shops who have zero print experience and their best quality is that they have zero print experience because yeah, yeah. you have to look at things logically and and from a fresh set of eyes in that look why are you, why do you keep walking from there to there to there oh, because we're printers that's what we do well why don't you do that are we allowed to do that yeah start doing that <laughs> <laughs> and and that's 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 what Bryce is saying that you know sometimes it takes an outsider to come in and go that's fucking crazy yeah we're doing that yeah, for yeah well yeah this, you need this, somebody who can this is the way the industry says we've got to do it so we're going to do it yeah fuck that do it properly. No, no. You need somebody who can uh, analyze the situation, break it down into little boxes, and then just tick each box as you go. Yeah. Um, and just look at things logically and rationally. Yeah. Um, I think that's somewhere where I struggle a little bit. I get caught in between the two. You know, there's a creative and a logic, and it gets it gets a bit messy. Yeah, and then there's the butterfly effect. Oh, look, a butterfly. Well, you're not <laughs> Well, I can see it. But you're by yourself right now, too. You don't have anybody with you, so you have to work with those hands. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been through stages where I've had staff to help, and uh, it definitely helps. When I um, take off a couple of hats, the printing, everything always improves. Um, it's hard to manage everything at once, but you've got to go through it. Like I say, it's serving your apprenticeship, you know, Yeah. for me anyway. And it, cool. it's always a work in progress. I mean, we're never done. Uh, we've got things, I don't know, I think Tony would agree right now, where things are running pretty tight. Um, we're pretty well organized. Uh, we're able to produce good quality prints pretty fast. Um, you know, but there's always something that needs to be fixed. It's a slick shop. Like it really is a slick shop. You know, things go through, but... Um... Uh, all, all, every piece of art that comes into merch shops passes under Bryce's fingers. Uh, uh, you know, it touches every single piece of artwork, whether it's right. le, whether it's le, what the fuck's that noise? That's that printer in that corner. Yeah, isn't it? it's a fucking printer. Well, I'm gonna go unplug it. It's a Mimaki. Oh, you like it? Oh, <laughs> bloody Mimakis! <laughs> I've got nothing against Mimakis, to be honest. It's just large formats in general. It's a large I've got format. <laughs> Problem solved. Bryce Bryce likes his little uh, his little label making machine. It's like a large format label making machine. Yeah, it's like oh, really? Dy- Dymo on steroids. It's a Mimaki. <laughs> wow, 
<laughs> yeah, but that's for like the screen labels. I use a brother P Touch Seven Hundred, and it's oh, fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, I think I added one of them to my basket. I think this must have come up in a comment, and then I went to find it on Amazon. It's sat. It's still sat there, but yeah, it's a little. Yeah, so on. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you not laminate those then? Or do you no. Put, do you put... No. Mm -hmm. They survive all the screen wash. Yeah. Because we used this before we had the, the auto reclaim. So we were dip tank and I don't think, I think maybe I've replaced one label and there's four oh. labels per screen, you know, on the corners. So I'll have to, yeah. I might, I might yeah. have to, uh, I might have to invest in one of them. I do like a little label printer. It's yeah. only little as well. Yeah. I, I find, uh, I don't buy the, uh, the ribbons or whatever the fuck it's called from, from brother or whatever. I found a bunch on eBay. Mm -hmm. uh, Super cheap. Another aftermarket uh, camera. There it is. Yeah, oh, right. So it's a cassette, right? Yeah. Like an old, old Gerber. Yeah. Mm. Love it. Come into it. Nice little hack. Yeah. yeah. Print life hack. I'd be really happy if every shop I went in had everything labeled. <laughs> you still get people yellow. writing with um, writing with Sharpie. Every time, yeah. one time, and the next time it comes through, oh, it's washed off. One time, <laughs> <laughs> and they're done that. Yeah, yeah. Everybody so, else. Yeah. What sets Mercops apart from other print shops? I know the answer to this, but I've got, I've got an answer. <laughs> we'll be outside right, looking. At it. <laughs> Mine is the. Um, so I go in lots and lots of shops, and the. The focus is production, but it's the focus on production at the cost of all others. So therefore, production is more important than cleaning. Production is more important than organizing. Production is more important than planning. Production is more important than learning and improving. In, in other words, we're far too busy putting out the fires to prevent any new ones. Um, and I think Merchops has got the balance right. Um, Almost a bit heavily on on the cleaning and uh, um, the improvement side, but it's a successful company making money printing good prints, so they're not doing anything wrong. Most places, I would say, don't charge enough for the service they offer. Therefore, they have to work like crazy to just print, 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 print. Let's clean up later. Let's tidy up later. Let's organize later. Let's plan tomorrow or later. We are far too busy. We're not, we can't afford the luxury of stopping the press to do something. Whereas merch shops seem to have that balance just right where the floor's dirty. Okay, let's stop the machine for five minutes and clean it. And then the, the clean as you go mentality, which is what we all strive for, is it's that. It's that kitchen mentality that I try and teach people in that, you know, if you treat the ink like food, there's no way you'd put a pot or a jar of peanut butter or mayonnaise or honey back in the fridge with food dripping down it. You'd wipe the food around it and then put it back in the same way that when, when these guys are finished with a pot of ink, nobody even thinks about it. They just wipe around the top. And they just clean. And it takes a second. I go in shops where I've seen them work all day Friday and all day Saturday just to clean the pots in the ink store. And then a week later, they won't clean it again. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we definitely clean as we go. Um, things are going to get nuts here. It's going to get uh, dirty by our standards, clean by most people's standards. And in 30 days, we'll take a half a day on a Friday and stop production and everybody clean. So I call it a deep clean. Deep clean the yeah. shop, every press from top to bottom, all the dust, all the ink, the floors get cleaned, everything gets cleaned, everything gets dusted. And, and you're right, the, uh, the ink buckets, they get cleaned as, you know, they, when the press, when the job's done, they take the ink out, um, wipe down the bucket, <laughs> put it on a cart, and it goes back to... Uh, the ink where, I don't know, call it whatever you want, ink storage. Kitchen, ink kitchen. The, the ink kitchen. Um, 
it's not easy to make that happen and to get everybody on board. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't do it, doesn't want to do it for whatever reason. <laughs> I saw you wiping buckets. You I did. did. I was shamed. I was yeah. shamed into it. The culture was so strong that even I cleaned up after myself. <laughs> yeah, that's good then. <laughs> you know, and that all comes down from Mike. I mean, Mike, when he walks out into the shop, uh, and we try and keep him out of there. <laughs> but when he, <laughs> when he walks out of the shop and he touches something, he gets ink on him, he just shakes his head in disgust and walks away. So now it's it's been ingrained in me for years, and and everybody that comes in gets trained to clean. Everybody fucking cleans. Everybody. Yeah. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah. But I, I think as well is, so what makes your print shop uh, stand out from others? As far as customers are concerned... You could look at that and, you know, you might ask a question, well, what difference does that make to the customer? But that makes every difference to the customer because a clean place is, a, you know, it's a more productive, happy place to work for the staff that work there. The results on press are going to be better. Uh, you're not walking around putting fingerprints all over shirts, etc. If you're so attentive to details of keeping this shop that clean, how attentive to details must you be to the shirts and the prints on press? You know, it... <clears throat> It, the, the mindset must rub off to the quality of shirts that you send out to your customers. And if I was a customer, that's how I would think. You know, that's I would look at your shop, uh, whether I was there in person or on Instagram, and I would go, those are the guys for me because their shirts must be immaculate, just like the shop is. Yeah, I, that does set us apart. I mean, you know, when customers come in and they see uh, a really clean shop and they you show them some sample prints similar to what they want to do and – it's nice and soft, vibrant. It's it, it looks cool. Um, yeah, I mean they're impressed, and that's part of part of the whole thing for us is is uh, to to make a good first impression. Yeah. Um, yeah, whether it be with the shop or the print or the people, and the people are happier too. Nobody wants to go work in a shithole. No, I don't know anybody that wants to go to work in a in a shop that's got spider webs everywhere and ink on the floor and ink on the ceiling and. I don't know anybody that enjoys going to that shop. No, no, but I've been in plenty of those shops. They do exist, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> people ask me, you more, know, more what, common what, than not, I imagine. I would say, yeah, Bryce is the exception. Merch shop, you know, it? merch shops is the as the exception, definitely. Um, and and a lot of the time, it is this. It starts at the top. We've had this discussion before, me and Danny. It does start at the top. You know, if if Mike, the owner, walked through and got plus us all on himself and never said anything and just accepted it as where yeah, yeah. because we're printers that's part of what we do yeah welcome to print this is it this is where you know get ready for this you can't have any nice clothes when you're in this industry and yeah, and just accepted yeah. it then it would snowball and snowball and then you come back in two years time and it would be a, a normal shit hole yeah. um but because mike gives it so much important he will stop a press for you to clean now i know oh, i know places Shit, we stopped recording. I don't it know says, what's going on there. It says recording. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. Are you sure? It says rec outside of Chippy T podcast. Browser ran out of storage. That's you. Has stopped. Let me just double check on that. Sorry. That's the first time this has ever happened. That's you. That's probably me. <laughs> Browser stop recording. It doesn't specifically say who. It'd help if it told you. Mine says recording it's... still. Yeah, I'm assuming it's me. Does yours say recording up in the top left? Yeah, yeah mine does. Right. Yep. Oh. Let me go. I'll, I'll jump out and come back in. Uh... We'll start without you. All right. Hey, Tony, it's like I just saw you yesterday. I know, yeah, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, it's not stopped fucking raining yet. Rain Did here it rain little, there? Yeah, a little bit this morning. Yesterday, it rained all day. Yeah. I thought, oh, welcome to Florida. Shell's going to come over. Your, and it's gonna... Florida, Orlando? Uh, yeah, it, it's just black, dark skies yeah. and rained all day yesterday. I thought, Michelle's going to come over. I've been saying it's it's hot and sunny all this time. She's going to come over and go, well, you're lying bastard. It's like Manchester here. <laughs> Manchester with flamingos. 
I'm still to see. I still to see an alligator and a flamingo in in Florida. There be two things that I need to see. Yeah, I don't. I I don't. I can't say. I think I've seen an alligator once. Yeah, since we're working again. You're back. Yeah, sorry about that. My fault. I think I don't that's know what not, I did. That's but... not right. You've moved position now. You were in the center, and now it's moved position. It's just completely gone now. Yeah. Well, I'll just it have doesn't to... matter. <laughs> yeah, we'll get through it. Well, I'm sure it'll work out you're, in the end. You're always first in our book, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. I do apologise. I can't remember what we were talking about. Uh, cleanliness. You know? Cleanliness is godliness, if that's the phrase. Ne- next to like that. Next to godliness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were saying that, you know, it starts at the top. It filters down. Yeah. If, if the I, I've known Mike stop machines to clean. I've known Mike stop machines because it's thundering and lightning and, you know, to protect things. So it's that, I suppose it's the importance on what you give the press. Some people are so focused on that machine must run, that machine must run. And some of it's pricing, dare I say. Some people are, are so keen on their pricing that they have to run a, a high run rate of, of six, seven, eight hundred an hour every hour that God sends, otherwise they're going to lose money and the bank's going to take the building off them. And I, I, had to, I had to thought, like, as you were talking earlier, I thought there are shops, as you were, you were describing that you will stop the presses to clean up, I thought there are shops in Leicester, if an operator stopped that press and started sweeping up, I'd put money on it, they'd get fired, they'd be scared yeah. out at the door. 100%. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Well, there's dirt on the floor. Leave it. It doesn't affect the shirts. Yeah. yeah. It well, doesn't affect the shirts. I mean, they, they can't afford to stop. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, in, so it's knowing in, the value, is... knowing the value of what you of, of the, the service you provide, not the product you provide, the service you provide, and, and knowing that that is worth an extra 50 cents, an extra dollar, whatever it is, an extra £2.50. Once we get that, we start being able to do things properly. I think doing things properly is a, is a good is a good way. You know, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Do it properly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and uh, that that really, that sums up Merch Ops for me anyway, is that I'll take a wild example of last week. There was a, on the back of the machine, there is a, a, a small part, a gas strut that wants replacing. And I said, well, we could steal it from a flash head that we're not using, and we could do that. And Mike just went, why don't we just buy one and do it once? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, <laughs> I'll shut up. <laughs> Let's just, just buy the proper one and do it once properly rather than doing it twice badly. Do the job properly, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, that to me summed a lot of a lot of what Mike is um, when he runs the place. I don't know how long, how long has he been going, Bryce? Uh, when did he start? Yeah, a bit Two, of an origin story for Merch Ops. 2005, 2006. What was he doing before that? Um, installing cell towers. Yeah. He, really? had a cell, he had a cell tower business. All right. All right. Yeah. So he's done a lot of different things. He's he's a man of many talents. I should imagine. <laughs> so that, that is a little bit of insight. Installing cell towers. You can't cut corners. Well, he also he has uh, quite a few years experience in offset printing as well. So, All right, okay. In his younger days, and offset printing is we're talking about very fine registration, very meticulous in comparison yeah. to a t-shirt. So maybe that explains where it filters down a little bit because uh, offset's very critical registration. Maybe that's not... it. Mm. I, I don't. I don't know. He drives me nuts sometimes with <laughs> with some of that shit, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, nobody else is allowed to put the studs in the screens. Mike sits on, on in the back room on his own and takes it upon himself to do it properly and do it right because it's the crux of the registry. Yeah, it's the it's the main point of the registration. Uh, and if you get that wrong or vary, you put a variance in there, then you could end up chasing registration forever. But Mike yeah, yeah, it throws it sets all himself in some time. <laughs> I went in there. They were doing it. He went a minute and three seconds. <laughs> well, what minute and three seconds? That's how long it takes me to do a screen. Okay, 
and he's got his <laughs> table set out and he drills everything perfectly and everything is silicon sealed and every every screen that comes off there has the little studs you know little registration studs on the screens has those put on perfectly by mike i think the rest of the stuff he's okay allowing other people to do but that bit he sees is so important that i'm going to do this yeah that's the most important part of these presses yeah uh, screw that up and nothing else matters what you buy them for if you're going to fuck that part up yeah yeah in a nutshell yeah and if, and if it's not you've, you've had them. what's that you've had you've had different presses with different registration techniques so you know yeah. you're really the, the 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 perfect example of uh, without it being an MHM advertisement, why did you pick MHM um, over the m &Rs, which have Trilock, the Rocks, which have a PIN system, and the MHM, which has a PIN system? You, you are, you're well known to be an advocate of, of saying that the MHM is the best system. Why? Yeah, it's the PIN system. So we had a couple of Rocks, and they weren't horrible presses. I, I, I would never tell somebody not to buy one. Um, if that's what they wanted and thought it was best for their shop. But uh, Mike has always looked for perfection. And and I know we're printing T-shirts and nothing's going to be 100% perfect. And we've had issues with every piece of equipment we've ever bought. So nothing's perfect. But the MHM is, is about as close as you can get to perfection in this business, we think. Unless somebody's got something I've never seen before. So the... the Having the pins on both ends of the screen, nothing moves. You don't have to unlock a screen to micro. Um, it's just a dead-on system. You know, when we, because we've got the Douthit CTS, so when we zero out the press to the Douthit, uh, it's fucking dead-on. And there's no other press that you can do that. With an MNR, you got to pull out a pallet. You pop a screen, you've got to reread your job. Okay. The same, and the same thing with a rock. And rock's got a pin system, but they don't really offer it anymore because it's it failed miserably. I think you can pay. Still, you can still get one if you want one. Uh, I, still, but, I still go to shops that use it. No. I still go to shops that have it. Uh, it's the two front pins. Rock have changed it a little bit from when you had it, Bryce. It's a, the the uh, the attachments that go on the screens are a little deeper now. Um, yeah. it, it it sort of works. It gets you close. But it doesn't get you as close as, as the MHM. It doesn't because it's only it, two pin systems instead of four. That's, it's only that's two. It really. And there's only one clamp in the middle of the back screen. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to, in order to, to move a micro, you've got to unlock the back clamp. And just like an m and uh, Tony, you know what happens. It jumps. It jumps like a fucker. And, yeah. and, it, and it jumps on you. Yeah. Uh, with the MHM, you don't unlock anything. We micro on the fly. So... You know, we'll, when we're setting up a job, if we've got a big run and we've got a, the first test print super close, but we want to tweak a few things, they start running and somebody goes around the press and tweaks it while it's running. And you can micro while it's printing. I try not to. <laughs> but but while during the pin stroke, print stroke, I've, I've hit a micro before and everything's fine. So you don't unlock anything. Yeah. Nothing moves. Wow. Wow. So how, how close would you say, would, could you give a percentage to... How many jobs do you run plug and play? So how many jobs do you take screens, chuck them in the press and press go? And then, you know, every now and again, you have to make a slight micro adjustment. Because you mentioned earlier, almost a minute of screen. To me, that sounds like chucking a screen in and just pressing go. Yeah. Is I, the times that you need to adjust? I'd, I'd say we're probably close to 90% where we don't touch a micro. So crazy. Um, I spent ninety percent of my days touching micros. <laughs> yeah, it's the hardest. It's the hardest part of the job, and not only that, Danny. What you're doing is a skill. Yeah, knowing knowing how to move. So when you when you loosen the the the, the micro wrench, you loosen it, move it, and then tighten it. Yeah. Well, loosening it moves it. You move it when you do that, and then you move it again when you tighten it again. So yeah, yeah. you've got three points of where it could possibly move. Um, yeah. You get used and, to slacking it off only a certain amount, and you're not really supposed to do that, but you do it anyway. And you know you can adjust your mic, you can lock it, and you can still adjust your micros a tiny fraction without rounding like a, the bolts off. You know, yeah. Um, you pick up a little. I'd swap it with Bryce any day, but <laughs> I don't give a care. I don't really care about how skilled it is. I just want to be able to just plug and play. <laughs> 
it, it does work really well. Um, I, 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 I'm biased. You know, I, I know I'm biased. Um, but the reason I'm biased, I'm, I don't get paid by MHM. The, the reason I'm biased is I used the M M and I used the uh, rock wasn't around when I was doing this, but I've used them since. Uh, Adele cores, the precisions, the Margs, the Marg and Schenks, all these different makes of machines, Anatol, Taz, and they all have that system. Every single one of them has that system where you must release the tension in the holder before you move it. Otherwise, you're trying to break the weld of the frame. So you've got to move it. You've got to unloosen it because only one side of the clamp moves. And by doing that, you move the screen. So the MHM is the only solution I've seen to hold the screen under tension the whole time, which means yeah. we can then move it. And yeah, so essentially, a, you can make it My life got easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sort of what it should be, isn't it, really? By default, we shouldn't yeah. be working with systems that just work like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, then, you know, it's not just the registration, but for us, I mean, we, we've run all three different brands now, and the MHM, we think, has got uh, a lot more fine tuning you can do to the print, uh, whether it be travel, air pressure, um, you know, all of those, all of those little things that make up a good print. Um, things that we didn't feel like we had with the other ones. So we didn't have nearly as much control over the print process on the other presses. Fine adjustments. It's those fine adjustments. Yeah, that people, fine. They, I, I say this time and time again because people sort of like think I'm just a big fanboy. All the machines print T-shirts. No. And at the end of the dryer, you'll be hard pushed to find the difference unless you're really looking for a technical detail. Uh, That's for user but, experience. But at the top of the dryer, you'll find a much more relaxed, stress-free printer. Yeah. If, yeah. Such a thing, if such a thing exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So a lot of um, print shops I've noticed, the customer base, the mo you know the successful shops, they seem to have a they seem to have a, a niche, a particular particular customer base. What what's Mercops's customer base, um, or is it just pretty widespread? Yeah, it's kind of widespread, but we're uh, we're known at least in in our market here for being able to print. Uh, large multicolor sim process jobs that a lot, yeah. of, a lot of other shops just can't pull off. They just can't fucking do it. Um, yeah, we have we've got one contract client that uh, he brought a, a big multicolor job. It was kind of an annual job, so you, you print the same print all year long. It was like a giveaway T-shirt for somewhere down on the beach, and he brought it to another shop and just failed miserably. Fucking couldn't do it. Um, so he called us up. He'd, he'd left us for a while for a variety of reasons, and we were glad for it at the time. But he came back because nobody else can print his stuff. Mm. Um, and he brought it to us, and we had their sample print. Uh, we redid the separations uh, because his separations looked like shit. And the first test print came off, and the guy was blown away. So wow. that's kind of what sets us apart from a lot of the guys in, in our particular market here. Just being yeah, able to that. do that and do it well. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Are you, would, you, would you put yourself as contract printers or end users? Both. Uh, what, Mike, what, says what we're, Mike says we're 60% contract. I feel it like it's higher than that, but he knows the numbers better than I do. Hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, 60 to 65% contract. Uh, the rest is retail, small, local businesses. How do we define contract? Like, what, what? Not end user. She's selling to someone who isn't the end user. Yep. So if, mm. if a band comes to you for some T-shirts, that's end user. If a right. company that services bands comes to you, that's contract. I see. Yeah, like contract is basically, all we're doing is getting paid to print. We're not, we're not, getting, we're not ordering the garments. We're not doing any of that stuff. They yeah, ship yeah. the garments to us, and all we do is get paid to put ink on shirts. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It's, it's the worst, kind, I've always it's the worst kind of printing. <laughs> yeah, well, you get paid less, I guess. Well, you've got less money in it because you can make an extra 15%, 20% just on buying the garment. 
but then you're financing the garment. So you've got to be careful because if it's a large project, you're financing the project. Um, if you don't get paid up front or agree good terms. Um, so there's a little bit there. Um, and if you on the other side, if you if you're contract printing and you get your math wrong, then you could be losing money every time you print. So you have to be aware that you've got where all the all the working out done. And you see it a lot where, at least over here in the States, you see it a lot where these small shops bought an auto, probably a rock, because rock will sell to anybody, uh, whether they need a press or not. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they're they're printing in their small town and they're just not enough business to keep it going. So they, they want to start doing contract. Well, they have not figured out their pricing. They have no idea how to price this stuff. And, you know, their press is on the market in a year and a half because they just can't make it work. Uh, so you yeah. really have yet for to do contract. You have your have to have your shit together. Yeah, yeah. You have to know your shit. You have to know what everything in that shop costs you. Yeah. Mm. You have to know how much it costs you just to turn the lights on. Yeah, yeah. That's no, pe no people margins. in there. Yeah, no people in there. Uh, work out the yearly cost. Divide it by an hour that you uh, you attend, and they go right. Okay, I was at a shop in Indiana two or three, well, about three or four lifetimes ago, I think it was now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he gave me the number straight away. It's like $540. $548. $548 every hour, irrespective, Just know it in his head. irrespective of whether I print anything or embroider anything. It, to walk in and turn the lights on cost me $548 by 9 o'clock. Yeah. If I haven't made 548 or contributed $548 by 9 o'clock, I'm basically throwing money away. Yeah, I feel like if you're going to go and have a contract through, you need to be a numbers person, or at the very least, you need a numbers person on board yeah, to be you keeping to you in check. I think when I first started, probably for quite a few years, probably only very recently that I've worked this out in my head, I think I had a bit of an identity crisis. I didn't know what I was uh, in terms of pricing as a contract printer, et cetera, et cetera. And I used to print, I used to price like a contract printer, even though really I'm not. I, you know, like I do sell to the band. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, every now and again, I'll work with an agency of some sort and have to deal with the middleman. Um, and I do have customers who provide garments and I just charge for the printing, et cetera. Um, but I used to, everything was charged. There was no markup on garments. And it's only very recently that I've sort of made that switch and understood. Um, so I can I can see how startup shops might fall down that trap and just think it's industry standard. Just think that's just how you're supposed to do it. Because I guess that's what I that's what I fell into. Um, but you have to you know you have to make, you have to work your numbers out. And I guess you have to establish who you are selling to first of all, and then that can help you in the direction that you take the business. Um, well, and the other thing, you've got to continue to reevaluate it as time goes on, too, because things change. You add automations, you add people, you add different processes, whatever. So, you know, we're always doing time studies and, and trying to figure out where we're at today. Um, you know? Yeah. What, what's been, oh, your, what's been your best automation? Reclaim? Right. Well, I don't know. For me, personally, because I deal with the art, the CTS. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so can you remember, were you using film before then? Yeah. So you were outputting the films, cutting them up, sticking them on a glass unit, uh, uh, exposing them with either metal halide or LED. Metal halide. Yeah, we did that, on it. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why metal halide? Why do you prefer that? Uh, we think it's still the best light, light source. And uh, right. Tony mentioned it's hotter, it's more expensive. Uh, we know. I mean, it's not grossly more expensive. Uh, it is. It is. It eats power. When you look at the electric yeah. use, it eats power. It's, you've got a, what a five kilowatt bulb. Yeah. But have, you got it on, have you got it on single phase, or have you got it on a on a three phase? I want to say this one is three phase. I think it's three, three phase. It's, it yeah. is probably a five kilowatt bulb. Yeah. Five kilowatt bulb with a cooling fan. Um, you don't have a vacuum because you've got CTS, but that eats a shitload of electric power. And the lamps themselves, which go every, I'm going to go 18 months, 
Yeah, maybe we're stretching a little longer than that, but you're probably... Yeah, 18 months yeah. to two years. Yeah. Uh, well, if, if, it do, if you don't replace it, it's on for longer because you've got a light integrator there, which is constantly reading the light and yeah. basically bending time. Uh, so it's changing one second into one and a half seconds because it's working out into light units. So the light integrator is a time machine. Don't tell Martin McFly. Uh, it, but it does change the value of one second. So therefore, it's on for longer. If it's on for longer, it's eating electricity for longer. So I, I, I absolutely, 100%, the electric savings will pay for the unit in, in a very, very small amount of time. But, but you'll but, hold a finer dot. Quality. So first, with a metal halide light, you have broad spectrum emissions. So the emulsion's usually looking for somewhere between 380 and 410, depending on what brand you get. And the, um, the LED will, will, will emit a light at 405. Done. Will never change. If it's hot, if it's cold, if it's new, if it's old, it's always 405. There's no such thing as a multi-spectrum LED. So no. the metal halide light, when you first turn it on, will warm up around about 380. It'll peak right. around 390, 395, and then it'll get warmer and warmer, and then it'll cut off. So it has hit a really big spectrum of light between 380 and usually between about 405, 410. So it, mm. it's pretty much guaranteed, no matter what emulsion you put in there, some part of that exposure has hit all of the parts of the emulsion that need curing. Uh, and LED just simply can't do that because it's a single point of, of, of frequency of light at 405 that comes out of that. So that's one of the main drawbacks. So it's more forgiving as an exposure unit in terms of the emulsion science. Is that what you're trying to tell me? The metal halide will hit almost any emulsion you put in it. This is what, yeah, this is what. So the, the, the 405 emitters are tuned to a certain kind of emulsion. Now, I think you use. Chromalime. We do here. No. So chromalime is 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 been is formulated to hit that four oh five mark. So it's good at that. It's okay at that. But the light isn't as intense. So you don't get. It takes longer to get a, a fuller cure, a stronger all the way through cure. So. Right. <laughs> Some people, especially the water-based printers, they experience breakdown faster from an LED than they do from a metal halide. Yeah, interesting. Because the light's not as intense. Even though the, the frequency is good, the light's not quite as intense to, to fully cure the whole body of the emulsion. So is any part of your, is any part of your thinking and your preference towards metal halide anything at all to do with holding halftones? Does it hold a better dot, in your opinion? Well, I've never we've never used LED, so I can't speak to that. Ah, um, true. I, I can. Yeah. But there's uh, no difference. No. All right. The, okay. I would say the only difference that I would see between the two, without getting super technical at 85 and 90 line dot, is um, emulsion strength. That's the one. That's the one sort of like major difference between the two techniques. I would say would be emulsion strength. The, some of the uh, some of the diehards that we know, Danny, <laughs> yeah, they love the metal halide, and they are convinced it gives a sharper, cleaner dot. But in my yeah, yeah, they've been trying to get one, haven't they? Yeah, so in my experience, that's not true. That's a... <laughs> You'll be as subtle as you like, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the little monsters! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, and and. I, I'm. I would love to see a side by side comparison to prove this point conclusively. My opinion, after seeing both, is that the only real difference is emulsion strength. But hey, I've been wrong before. <laughs> well, Mike thinks it's the best, and you've you've seen snippets snippets of the shop, and he he wants nothing but the best. So yeah, and I completely you. understand it. I, I do understand it. Um, he doesn't mind spending a little more money for electricity uh, mm. if he's convinced that it's it's the best product he can buy. It comes back down to you know is that if, if you're losing money on electricity, you're doing something really wrong. On yeah. Your yeah. Yeah. See what you're saying. Yeah. Mm. So, when you finished at the shop, what do you like to do? 
just to break it up. Well, but personal. Yeah. We don't go personal yeah. on here. This is this is business only. This is uh, this is season two. We're trying something yeah. new. <laughs> I drink heavily. I drink heavily. <laughs> I've been practicing for a while, and I'm really good at it now. Practicing yeah. <laughs> years. Wow. Well, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. What's your favourite tickle? Yeah, I, I don't have. You're a, a whiskey or a, a beer? Uh, no vodka. Vodka? Like, really? Yeah. Damn. Like flavoured vodka? No. Just straight. Uh, no, just a uh, vodka with uh, some orange seltzer, maybe. Wow. Couple of shots first thing at morning. <laughs> I wouldn't be so happy. <laughs> so I, I've got some rum. Oh, Bacello. Wow. Well, I think that's Puerto Rican. If it was an evening podcast, I would try some uh, some rum from Cuba. Havana Club, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. I think I've tried it's that good, one. That. I think it's, it's quite that. nice. Mm. But I'm not gonna. Mike might watch us, so I'm not going to open it. <laughs> <laughs> well, number one, you've no danger of Mike watching this, so you're okay. But I won't uh, recommend opening it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have a big. Yeah, I don't have a big social life. I play pool. I play a lot of billiards. Um, billiards. Pool. Is, is it pool or is it snooker? No, no, I don't play snooker. There's a couple really? of tables around here, but. I don't know anybody that plays personally. Wow. Well, yeah. Cool. Cool and Luke. So, cool and Luke. So, makeups. Um, it, you, do you offer embroidery as well? You have, yeah. Are you diver, diversifying? Mm hmm. No, yeah, so you offer more than just. We've got uh, two six head Baradins and a single head Baradin. Right. Um, Tony and I talked about it a little bit yesterday. I, I don't. We don't promote that enough. I think we're we're missing out on that. There's some good money. Yeah. In. There's good money yeah. in embroidery. Yeah. This is where I was going. Do you feel like you need to diversify? Do you feel like you would miss out on a lot of custom if you didn't offer embroidery? Because they might come to you for screen print and also want embroidery. And if you don't offer both, they'll go somewhere else. Well, I mean, we didn't have embroidery for a long time, and we did just fine with embroidery by outsourcing it. Um, right, yeah, you know, but we had a falling out with a guy uh, this few years back, and we decided to bring it in house. Um, I don't know it was it was worth it. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I, we just need to do a better job of, of promoting it. Uh, yeah. It's it's a busy room. It doesn't sit idle, but uh, you know, it's not busy enough. We don't have enough. We don't have enough backed up. Uh, to ensure that it, you get nervous, just like in screen printing, you, you know, the order stop coming in. And when you've got a bunch of presses and a bunch of people and you're turning stuff really fast and the job carts are empty all of a sudden and there's not a oh, lot yeah. to back it up, you get nervous. So Embroidery is kind of like that for us. Uh, it always seems to come out in the end, but yeah. we need to do a better job on that. Chicken and egg. It's all chicken and egg. Do you, yeah. do you, create, do you create the demand and then find a way to fill it? Or do you yeah. find a way to fill it and then look to create some demand? Which way do you go? Uh, and I don't think anybody ever gets it right. There's no right answer. No, and it's fluid. You know, you, I, I can go back six months. Um, we recently did a seminar down at uh, at Mercops, and, and when we were talking about the seminar, there was loads of time and loads of space, and it was fine, and, and the, the print production was quite forgiving. The schedule was open. We're fine. And then, as we got to within about two weeks of doing the se the, the seminar, Bryce is like, "Fuck, we're busy. <laughs> <laughs> How long are you going to be, Tony? Because we're really busy. I really need to get this pallet shipped out and back out again. I could do without you waffling on for six hours." <laughs> <laughs> They're quite fortunate; is they've got two buildings, Danny. So, uh, was it two years ago? We bought the other building. You got well, the other building? I, yeah, we leased it. Rented it. Uh, yeah. yeah, two years ago. About yeah. two years ago, across the car park, there was a, an identical building came free. So they they got that and put, was the plan to put two presses and a dryer in there? Uh, and they've got one press and a dryer in there. So that's like a tap that they can turn on at any point. No, so when yeah. it gets busy, really, the only thing they're going to look for is squishy things to fill it. 
yeah. uh, right. because you know it, it's like a, an extra press just there. And I've got I've got a couple of companies in England that do exactly the same. I've got one that has a building with three presses in, and wow. they're three little X types, six color X types, and they're just they just wait. They're a bag printer, so most of it's just one and two color. Uh, yeah. But they just wait and wait and wait, and then they, they get a, a mighty demand where they just turn on the tap, yeah, yeah. print, Open and then, then mothball it again. And they've been known to mothball it for a year. Wow. And yeah. they've got no problem with it because they'd rather react and keep the customer and do the work than not be able to react and look at overtime or, or outsourcing or uh, offshoring. Uh, so for them, it works really, really well. Hmm. All right. Well, we we hate mothballing it. <laughs> I think we're at a point now where, uh, at least looking forward over the next few months, I think we'll keep three presses spinning on a regular basis, uh, with maybe letting the fourth one print some small stuff occasionally. Uh, so we've got a lot of room to a lot of room, a lot of capacity that's that's unused at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the amount of feed. What would you say a daily total is for you? Because I know your work. Your work is between one and well, between fifty pieces and and five hundred pieces. Yeah. Uh, always high color count. In fact, you you showed me the numbers the other day, didn't you? It was like yeah. three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half yeah. colors with the average color count. Yeah, just shy. Yeah, just shy of five, uh, four colors, three point six eight or something like that. Yeah. What an average number of pieces? I think that was around a hundred. And and so how how many pieces per day in your head without looking at individual designs do you expect from a press? So using those averages, um, I'd like to see a minimum of ten jobs per press, because okay. that's you have to account for setup takedown. Uh, we run really lean here, so we don't have a lot of extra people to clean squeegees and flood bars and do a lot of this extra bullshit that needs to be done all of the cleaning. Yeah. So uh, if somebody calls out, uh, we've got somebody back cleaning squeegees and flood bars that shouldn't be back there normally, they should be printing or, or doing something else. So yeah, I think initially, you know, if we can get 10 of those out per press per day, um, some operators I think can do, I've got a couple of operators I think can do 15 or more a day of those. Uh, I've got some other operators that probably are going to be closer to 10. Um, so yeah, those would be good days. I wonder how that compares to the polar opposite shop with scruffy floors and cardboard all the way around the press and ink all over the screens. I wonder how many jobs they do if they're, you know, churning out the same sort of numbers, the hundred, hundred pieces on average, three, four colors. I wonder if they're hitting 10 jobs or if they're hitting significantly enough more to even have an argument that, you know, so I've been, to, I've been to those you know? places here in America, and um, yeah. I can tell you the number, the expected number is a lot, lot higher than that. It uh, is, all right. So and, there, there's, and I, I, there's I, an I've predicted, and I've said, look, using my prediction, then um, you should be aiming for around about this, which is slightly higher than what, what uh, Bryce said, but only slightly, not, not completely out of the ballpark. And the answer I got from the owner of the company was, if I do that, I would have to close the company. It's that that close that if if I stick to if I stick to your numbers, Tony, your predicted numbers, I would just have to close the company. There's no point printing because I'd be losing money every day. So I might as well just take a thousand dollars and put it in the trash every day. There's no point me printing like that. And I think that's really sad. Uh, it means that, the, and, and I said, well, then your prices are wrong. And he showed me his prices and I went, well, there's a really simple solution to this. You need to just stick a dollar in front of every single one of those prices. And, and he's like, well, I'll lose my customers. Well, but you're already a busy fool. You're already printing for nothing. If, if you don't value what you offer your customer, then you know you're in the wrong game. You're going to be doing this forever and never going to make any money, and never get any better because you haven't got time for improvement. You're so busy putting out the fires that there's no time for fire prevention. When I first got started, I used to I used to basically sell uh, a lot on eBay, 
and I used to have a tool that would, so it was something that I could control. And if I were putting a new product out on eBay, um, a repeated listing that sold over, you know, sold multiple quantities rather than just a one-off, uh, I would have a tool that would steadily increase that price, steadily increase that price until I saw a drop off in sales. And it would, the tool would calculate a happy medium where I could sort of keep up with the work and maximize the profit without putting off customers. I can't remember what it was called, but it would basically, you're basically trying to find that sweet spot. And I guess, you know, you could do that manually. You don't need a tool to do it. You just, it's basic find economics the of supply and demand. It really is. Yeah. You know, when supply outstrips demand, then it's cheap. When demand outstrips supply, it's expensive. And finding that equilibrium spot is basic economics, uh, and, and I think a lot of a lot of firms, sadly, have lost sight of that, and believe they have to be the cheapest in the game. And that yeah, so we, we call those guys hang and hang and bang. They they don't they could give a shit about quality. Hang, hang and bang, hang and bang, <laughs> and it's all about speed. It's got nothing. It's it's all to do about speed. Yeah, um, nothing to do with quality. You know, we've got a lot of printers in our market. You just right my life. <laughs> <laughs> Hang and bang. The description of 30 years of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm not off into details. <laughs> Oh, uh, Tony. Yeah. So, sorry, go on, Bryce. You're right. I know. Just quality matters to us. And if it takes a little longer to get a really good quality print, that's what we do. Um, and, yeah. And we charge for it. I mean, we're we're not the cheapest guy in town. We're not the most expensive either. Uh, there's shops around us that are more expensive than we are. We're very competitive. Um, and we find a way to make it all work. Yeah. Uh, there's a place for everybody. There's a place for those who want to just be solely production focused and want to get. And I and I guess that's sort of veering towards the promotional giveaway world, where they're going to churn out stupid numbers for you know breadcrumbs, absolute pennies. But because we've got the capacity to do it, and we don't particularly care because it's literally a shirt that's going to be worn once and chucked in bin or a tote bag or whatever. It's less important. But um, yeah. I think it's a place for everybody. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what's your uh, what you got? Look, what you got to look forward to today? It's the beginning of a working day. What day are we on? Is it Thursday, Thursday. today? It's Groundhog Thursday, Day. Thursday. So... Oh dear. <laughs> now that Tony's gone, you've got to like. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Let's yeah. catch you, up. You quick. can now get some work done now. Now that I'm. Let's undo yeah. all his mess. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's it's just another day. I need to go through the the print schedule. Um, I'm looking at it now and I've got a ton of shit to print. I'm not behind on anything, which is a good thing. Um, but I'm bumping up against some deadlines that, that we need to get done. Uh, yeah, I've got, yeah. I do all the contract billing and I'm a little behind. So I'll probably but be Bryce, here. Bryce is a, a Monday.com genius as well. It does make mon- it this. does take Monday dot com sing and dance. I am not. We, uh, the, we had a <laughs> guy. Seen, it? We had uh, Lucid Inc came to the seminar last week. Yeah, that guy is a total Monday freak. Uh, he's using the CRM. He's tracking sales. He's got a whole sales funnel. He's got a follow up thing. He's got automations. Pretty crazy. So yeah, I'm going to be picking nice. his brain here in the near future. But. Good. It's a real awesome. For me, Monday is just purely task management for jobs. Um, yeah. yeah. How That's many screen pieces? printing now? Yeah. How many pieces? How many impressions? What was the PO date? The due date? When did the goods get here? Who checked in the goods? You know, what part is ready? Is there a proof approved? Is there art? Uh, the screen's been made. Is the ink been pulled? Um, all of the the little details. Monday.com yeah. is, think- is the one that I keep seeing everywhere I go. Um, I don't see much of the other off the shelves, if you like. Bespoke is still beating Monday.com, but I would say over the last two years, Monday has overtaken Bespoke. 
Because you can, you can be, you can make Monday bespoke, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think if you took a screenshot of every print shop who uses Monday and look at their dashboard or the multiple dashboards, every every dashboard will look totally different. Completely different. Because we all approach it. Yeah, yeah, yeah completely. Um, we all want to have you... different things from it, so it's and it allows you to do that. All right, that's a boss. Give me one sec. I need to go open the door. People are getting restless out there. I'll be right back. <laughs> the natives. Yeah. Sorry hey, about that. Yeah. Rice, easy. Oh, look. Jesus That's Christ. Okay. I'm going to take the time clock we've got is plugged into the network. And every time someone oh. punches it in the morning, the whole fucking thing goes to shit. So I'm about ready to rip it off the wall. <laughs> yeah, put that on your marginal games list. That's a job for later. <laughs> oh, fuck. What did I miss? Wait. Uh, okay. Just Tony telling us about his beer belly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it happens to the best of us, Tony. We all get. I'm we just all saying that Mike, Mike is not there at the minute, so you're not going to get done. You're going into trouble because he's in South Dakota ready to watch me race the bastard. Yeah. He won't, yeah. Be, he won't be running with me, Danny. He's hiring a, a four wheel drive ATV. He's going to run at the side of me, throwing Bud Lights at me. <laughs> a big long boom with a Bud Light hanging off. <laughs> Just tip it to take a sip. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't worry about it, Mike, either. Do you know? <laughs> so he rang me yesterday, Bryce. Yeah. And he says, fucking hell, Tony. It's 105 here. <laughs> I'm like, you know, Mike. I know, Mike. I'm like, you're lying. So I thought, it's. And I'm trying to call him out on it. And he's really good at bluffing. He kept it going. He brought Kimberly in. What was it like tomorrow? 101. Oh, it's only 101, Tony. He'd be okay. <laughs> but it is a lot warmer up here. And I'm falling for it, hook, line, and sink. I'm like, it's going to be really red hot on this race. And then I, obviously, I've got Google. So you open Google, it's in 86. I mean, a lying bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and to this, to, even now, he's still sort of like keeping it up, which warm. Playing along with it. Yeah, he wants that. <laughs> He won't stop. He gets Tom every time he calls Tom at uh, SPSI or Tom calls, he answers the phone and just fucks with him. Tom's like, it, 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 the phone goes silent. You know? um, it tells me he's bought a rock. Yeah, how's it going, Mike? <laughs> uh, not good. Ryan was just here from Ryanette. <laughs> and it goes silent. God. Yeah. No. <laughs> I nearly, I, I, I actually have a rock quotation. It is on the possibility list. I'm not going to lie. It's, it looks like a nice press. I, it's, I know it's not quite the MHM, but it looks like a nice well, enough press to me. T-shirts, you know. Uh, I, I, I've said this before time and time again. I, I've got customers with rock. You know, I'm going over to Germany ne- next month, uh, and both customers have got a rock. <clears throat> so, it, you know, it's not, it's not that they're a bad press. It's just that, there are a be- there is a better one around, you know, and um, yeah. and, and I'm saying better from me. I'm the guy mm. having to press the buttons, move the wrench, change the angle, change the pressure, change the travel. So from me, my perspective, not as an owner, I don't care how much it costs or anything like that. From a, 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 an operator's point of view, it's the only machine I've ever used that feels like it's been built by an operator rather than a technician. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And for us, it's MHM, then Rock, then M and R. interesting, yeah. right? The M and R, you know, it's the backbone of American printing, but a, there's a higher skill level required to use an M and R. You know, so you know, it's not it can't be that bad a machine if you need a higher skill level to use it. <laughs> like you said, they all print money. Yeah, every so, single yeah. one of them prints money. Yeah, you can, you, you yeah. know, you... except for Anatol. Let's not talk about Anatol. I've got one. I have to talk about them. Yeah, yeah. Nerve there, Bryce. You hit a nerve there. (laughs) Their mixers, though, Danny, are you looking at their mixers? Their little mini mixer? Yeah, it looks real good. There's two versions. The best ever made. That's awesome. Oh, awesome. (laughs) (laughs) I'll have to put that one on my shopping list. (laughs) I I was quite impressed with it because you've got two there working away. And because it mixes the little quarts, the little uh, one-liter pots and two-liter pots, uh, it mixes those so well, you know, without having to mix I think that's the thing. Them. A lot of the mixes will only take the bigger tubs, won't they? Whereas yeah. this, you can scale it. Yeah, you can put those little tubs in. Uh, I, I quite like Alex at Minnesota Inc. He's got the shaker. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was cool. I really like the shaker because there's nothing to clean. I know. 
and that was five grand. So I, I mm, quite, I quite jump. yeah, I quite like that. I'm mm. gonna bring that up to Mike. I know we've looked at shakers before, but I don't think we ever got serious about it. But mm. yeah, I'd love to have a shaker instead of the mixers. Nothing to clean. No, and he says it works yeah. really, really well. No, we're probably going to buy the bigger Anatol one for fibers because we're not doing drums anymore for a variety of reasons. Mm. So for our weightings, uh, five gallon. Yeah, so we're probably twenty-five gonna... liter tubs. Mm. So big old barrels. Great, Bryce. I've had a right lovely time chatting to you. I'm sure we should definitely do this again. Yeah, yeah I'm absolutely. a bit conscious that you've got a hell of a busy day coming up. So yeah, so we're going to let you go, yeah. Bryce. We're going to sign you off. Don't want to. I don't want to hold you up. No, it's, it's been superb. You're only the sort of second guest, so you know you're doing all right. Sorry, I'm all right. John, I, I... Oh, did we have John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. John and Sarah. Did we have John as a separate guest, or was he just in the same room as me? I thought he was a separate guest. He was right, a okay. guest, yeah. All right. Yeah. Talking yeah. about the laser. Oh yeah, we have to tell him not Fishing to swear before he beams. comes on. <laughs> 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 so you're live on Channel 4, please do not swear. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, right. we, we want to know some feedback as well from our, our listeners as to whether we should do more of this. We know loads of people in the industry. People do ask us if we can come on here, but me and Danny are a little bit introvert. We don't like talking to people, do we? <laughs> I bloody love talking to Bryce, actually. So <laughs> I thought that very enjoyable. I really appreciate you coming on. and. Um, yeah, it's my pleasure. Result, lot, lot to learn, lot to learn. Disappointed, I wasn't the first guest. I tried to be, but Tony <laughs> kept walking me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, yeah. Well, no, you're number one, Bryce. We'll definitely get you on first. I said, well, I, I I've said that to promise. everybody. To be fair, <laughs> there's a long list of people I've said that to everybody, Bryce. So, yeah. <laughs> thing is, Sarah, Sarah actually paid us. You see, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsorship. That's what we're looking for. Sponsorship now. It's all about the sponsorship, isn't it? I know. I'd like to see more guests. I, yeah. You know, the, doing a whole episode maybe is maybe we got a little boring. I don't know. I hope people enjoyed it, but no. But I'd like to see more guests, yeah. whether it be industry people or printers or you know whatever. Uh, Danny's mum. <laughs> Danny's mum. I'm a chuckling mum. Jesus <laughs> She, the only thing she is an expert at is dyeing clothes pink. <laughs> so, if that's what you're into. <laughs> Good God. Right, well. Right, have a fantastic day, Bryce. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, we'll catch you later. And, uh, All right. We'll catch you later and we'll do it again sometime. Sounds Bye. good. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Take care, mate. See ya. Right. There we go. Hell of a guy. Did you kick him out or was he gone? <laughs> no, he, he, he found the button. He found the button. What do you think? Oh, good, that. Enjoy that. Enjoyed that, yeah. Yeah. I, I think we, we should, should have been for about a week, so. But... It, it's difficult uh, time wise. Um, think... Yeah, there's a couple of people in my DMs trying to get on, and of course, we'll do it sometime, but balancing it with you being abroad in hotel rooms. And there's also the unstable connection issue as well. That worked perfect, I think. Apart from good, yeah. I think Riverside, I think Riverside's middle. getting better, actually. I think that's true, you know. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's improved. It's very from, buggy, but... We've been using it about a year now, just short, uh, and I think it's mm. uh, I think it's improved. Yeah, yeah. I know you pay for get it. Get in there. A work in progress. It'll always be a work in progress, won't that it? Let's does. be honest. A fucking work in progress. What's your plan for Dave, and what's, rest of, what's your rest of your day entail? Biscuits. Cheetos. Cheetos. So with the race coming up next weekend, Oreos. are you stuffing your face? Is that like a tactic? Is it on purpose? And five hour energy drinks. <laughs> yeah, that's my tactic. <laughs> right. I've got to do a little so bit of carb loading. Carb a, little, a little bit of carb loading. Just a little bit. Not right. not crazy because I don't want to be too heavy. Um I'm, what are we on? Thursday? So Friday, Saturday, is it Thursday? Yeah, Friday, Saturday, it's Sunday. Uh, I've got three days. So in these three days, you know, I've been I've been eating a lot of sushi. Um, really? There's quite a lot of nice sushi places around here. I have a rule when I'm traveling not to eat sushi if I can't, so if I'm more than 100 miles from the sea. 
<laughs> and, and here, <laughs> here I'm very close to the sea. When I'm in the middle of Minnesota, where it's landlocked and it's four and a half hours either way to get to sea, then uh, yeah, that's flying as well. Uh, then you see, you pretty much. I, I'm not. I'm not keen on that. But when I'm close to the sea, I'll have sushi. I I'm, it's, I'm, I laughed at that, but I do the same thing. Not with sushi, with fish and chips. Fish and chips. Like, yeah. I won't have fish and chips inland. No, I'll have it here, or I'll have it at another seaside. But I won't have it in York or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's fine, but same sort you of just thing. Assume, same don't sort you? of thing. So yeah. fish and rice uh, has been really good, and of course, no alcohol. Uh, and so far, so good. Just, just can't basically just. I think I want to get it out of the way now, damn it. Yeah, yeah. Now the nerves start to build and anxiety. I, yeah, I, I think I'm now. It's like it's been a year. It's been looking forward to it for a year. Um, the last three weeks, I've not been looking forward to it. I've been sort of like, I want to get. It. I don't want it to drag on. And this yeah. week is really dragging on, and I'm, I'm sort of like, I've got this. This looming thing above me, which is, 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 I've got to get it out of the way now. And once it's out of the way, I've actually said to a few people, I'll probably keep running. Because I was going to burn everything. Um, bloody war, yeah. I might, changed, I might keep running. There's no prayer I'm going to do big long distances. But no, um, no. I've, been, I've really enjoyed. So, Mike Biona. Nick met me and this is well go run around the park. We went to go run around the park and around the lake and he's doing four hundred press ups as he goes round. I'm like, fuck, and he's older than me. But I said, what actually what a nice place nice way to keep fit. Yeah. But then I suppose the argument is you can't do it in fucking in shaky wakey when it's shaky wakey wanging it, it down, down with rain. rain. Yeah. Crossing it down. That's all you need, isn't it? So I don't know. I just have to become a fair weather runner. Yeah, I, I quite like this. The sort of like three mile, five k is uh, half hour. So to go and stick your shoes on them for half an hour seems seems worth it. Um, anything less than that probably doesn't seem worth getting changed and showering. And all no, that shit. half an hour every now and again sort of ticks you over, don't it? it keep, you... keep you fit, I think. Yeah. Keep you fit. Keep you. Gives you gives you something else as well. Like it's all good, very well and good working all the time, but you sort of need something else, don't you, every now and again. And so this is something you can take with you as well. You can do this across the world. Yeah. Which is, you know It's good for me. Not yeah. a bad thing. No. So I mean I've got my my schedule's crazy at the minute. Come from here, I'm only home for a day and I'm back out to Romania. Uh, and then from Romania to Germany, from Germany to Belgium, from Belgium go doing an, an exhibition in Belgium for a, a new distributor, which I've worked for before. I thought you were about to say an exhibition in Belgium, a nudist. What, you're going to be an exhibitionist now? <laughs> Is that your new thing? <laughs> <laughs> That's not pretty. People won't bear to see that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's a new one for me, different one. Um, what do you mean by an exhibition? A show. All right, so it's not, you've done plenty of shows, but it's not... It's just a new show, that's all. It's a new show, it's a signed show, right. uh, and we're going to be printing Magna Inks on, uh, for uh, the Benilux um, supplier. Benilux is Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg. Right. Uh, it's a customer I've worked with before, uh, Pals, uh, Anton Pals from, from that area. Long-standing supplier of MHMs and inks and brothers and everything else and he's just picked up the magna dealership up for that area so he's gonna take a press and run some magna prints and i'm just working now with magna to get me a a reasonable design that's not gonna break me <laughs> so teresa's like yeah i'll get you a 14 color job on polyester no <laughs> teresa no no stop that right There's now some special effects in there so well. some puff and some glitter and some reflective no stop that <laughs> <laughs> and you have to print it over seams. Yeah, <laughs> over the pocket. And under the armpit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that, that's next on the list. And then Israel, uh, old Maxi in Israel. And then, yeah. then we're in November. And there's talk of me coming back here in November. So 
Is there blood in order? To, the, to make ops or just uh, in, to, to make it? Yeah. The, um, the seminar worked really well. It got, it got really well received. So we did the seminar. 30 odd people. Yeah, it, was, it started off at eight, between 8 and 10 people. Uh, and there were, there were 30 odd people turned up. They were really interested, really engaged. <clears throat> we had a, a, you know, a learning session and then a lot of people went to go for a, a, a nosy around their chops, which was great. Because the guys, you know, they love what they do and they'll, they'll talk about it. You, know, you ask them a question, they'll, they'll give you an in-depth answer. And yeah. so wandering around with the reclaim, um, looking how they make it work, the, the reclaim, the art, the everything. <clears throat> and they, they work really well, you know. I have a I have a little issue with the reclaim of Merch Chops and you know that's what's price about it's not a secret. It's not automatic reclaim in the true sense of the word. They have extra steps in there. Yeah, they clean before it goes in the dishwasher. They wash it before it goes in the dishwasher. Yeah. Uh on both, on the squeegee washer and the um the screen washer. And I was a bit disappointed because I go to shops in England and they don't do that. They're going straight from the press. Yeah. But the shops in England don't get good results and they spend a fortune in chemicals. Now, the chemical supplier for Merck Chops has already rung them up and said, what's going on? You, you spend the least amount of money of all our customers with Reclaim. What are you doing? And it's because they're washing it first. It means there's a guy doing all the washing. Yeah. But he was doing it anyway. The screens don't magically go in the pre- in the in the screen wash. And it's a dilemma because it's not fully automated. Take a dirty screen or squeegee. Put it in the machine and it comes out clean. No, it's but it does it's feed auto, into it? my ready to cook quote. You know, when if the salesman says it comes out ready to quote, then it's a lying bastard. Um, they, what, but this is their, like a perfect process. example. So their process, right? Screen comes off press. They the operator detapes it, puts it in a rack. The Reclaim guy takes it out of the rack, puts it into a washout booth, washes it with emulsifiable screen wash, both sides. All right. Then yeah. rinses it with then... low pressure water. Right. Then puts it in the machine that reclaims them. So, so, so the process has already begun. You've already like they, took the first layer off. Cleaned it already. Yeah. Then the squeegees. The squeegees are in a parts washer. Now it's quite a good parts washer. It's from Easy Way. Uh, and right. it's got <laughs> seen that it's like a it's like a, a washing machine on its side it just spins around like a tumble dryer type of thing so before that so before that they go into a parts washer you know it's pretty much standard parts washer which usually has mineral spirits in it well they've bought a, a, a special filtered one that has easy way chemicals in it and they'll use that to get the 95% of the ink off not like a quick rinse. 95% mm. of the ink comes off on this. Then it goes into the the, the dishwasher, the bar glass yeah. washer, to get yeah. that final rinse. And I said, you know, so why don't you just spend a, an extra minute making sure that 90, from 95% to 100% clean in the parts washer? And he said, well, you always get that little bit of ink that trails down the edge of the blade. You always get that little bit of ink at the edge. You always get a little mm. bit somewhere. He says, and when that contaminates a white print or contaminates a yellow print, the time lost on press far outweighs the time it takes us to just put them in this machine and guarantee they're clean after it's a three-minute cycle. And I'm hard, mm. I'm hard pushed to argue the logic because what they're doing works, but I don't think it's the most efficient use. So- it's a conversation as well. You pay all that money for that machine, and, and you're basically do. saying it doesn't really do what it's supposed to. Yeah. You know, mm. it's. I, I don't. I don't disagree with Merch Jobs. I don't disagree at all. But I know exactly what you're saying, and it's a. It's a conversation and a debate there, and who's right or wrong, like 
how do we know that Al- is Alex right? Because Alex, from what I gather, he chucks a screen in, it comes out of her end. Please. And yeah. I think he has somebody to grease in at uh, end uh, machine, maybe if, if that. Yes. Um, so he, it's and, and it's the process. same unit, same machine. So yeah, yeah. But what we don't know is how often Alex changes his chemicals and mm. what percentage need to go back through. So yeah, I can tell yeah. you from Merchops, they use the least amount of chemicals of anybody that I've seen with a, 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 a auto reclaim. And a hundred imagine being... and a hundred percent come out ready to cut. Yeah, I, I can't imagine they've put any through. They've started they've kick started the process. Yeah. So I don't know Which... who's right and who's wrong. <sighs> Merch are doing it correctly but probably inefficiently. There's some double handling going on there. Well, it's going back to the old, the old. It's going back to the old print shop ethos. It's almost like a perfect little example. Are, is Mer- is everything that merch shops are doing the most efficient way they could run that shop? Is stopping to clean the floor and etc. 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 Is it efficient? No, mm, not really on the no. face of it. No, but they're choosing to do things right. And if you're going to do it, do it right. Yeah, yeah. The job's worth and, doing. It's worth doing proper. Yeah, and it's almost. Long, t- it's not short term thinking. If I stop this press now, it's going to delay me a little bit. But long t- in the long run, keeping the place clean, you're not going to get dirty fingerprints everywhere, etc., etc., etc. It'll pay you back eventually over time, won't it? Yeah. Eventually, it all comes full circle. Yeah. So these little, uh, these extra steps that might appear inefficient at the time, will come back to you. Yeah. You'll pay, that, you'll pay you back. That's my issue. It, it in one seems way or inefficient. It's not inefficient because it's working. What does it cost them? So at no point are they waiting for screens. At no point is that the bottleneck. And at no Mm. point I don't think they're losing money because of the guy that they're paying to do the reclaim. So they have a guy that makes the screens, and he's not permanent because they think they make between 30 and 40 screens a day. So the guy that makes the screens also catches on the end of the dryer. So it's it's not a full-time job. Um, To make 30 or 40 screens was probably an hour. Wow. Because it takes a minute to image, and the rest is, you know, expose, develop. Yeah. Yeah. Done. You know, it's not that that big a thing. I would say the next thing that they will buy will be an auto developer because they haven't got that system quite yet. Right. Got the auto coater, got the CTS, and then it goes into a dip tank for a minute and then gets washed out by hand. Um, I'm just going to get a garden sprinkler. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sit it above me, washout booth, and just let it constantly trickle. I've seen that. You don't need need a garden sprinkler. Just take a piece of hose, run the hose, and just just put holes in it. Yeah. It's, well, it's, you want a fine spray, don't you? No, you, it, just it, want, you just want it covered with water. Yeah, I guess so. And if it's running down, it's going to take... Yeah. Don't forget it's been sat in a water tank for a minute anyway. Yeah. You can you can leave that screen, bugger off and go do something else. That's, and that's what Come I've seen. Done. But I saw that in, sort of in, in place of a dip tank. Yeah. All right. No, just an idea, anyway. Yeah. So I cut you, cut you up then, didn't I? No, you're good. It's good. I, I, I've seen a very similar sort of thing. Um... I think that looking at the staff and looking at the number of screens that go through there every day, I think they've got it right. I can defer to the latest one where I showed you, like, they've spent 250 grand in the screen room, and they've got one guy doing all that, and he's doing about 100 screens a day. But he's not pre-washing anything. He hasn't got time to pre-wash it. I bet he's not washing squeegees. So Mercops are... Mercops, it's um nobody's going into the screen room at end of day and doing the entire process. It's like a constant process that's happening all day. So yeah. as soon as a job comes off press, those squeegees go out into the, you know, start the process of cleaning and stuff. So they bought so double squeegees. Enough... So they bought, squeegees. they bought double squeegees and flood bars to allow them to not be waiting for uh, squeegees so to be washed. Rotation. So yeah. they can be they can be start printing. And the machine be running while somebody else mm. is cleaning the squeegees. Mm-hmm. 
I wonder which I wonder which is the most efficient option to have a build up of screens and wash them all in a designated day. I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking more about myself to be honest here. Or to just have somebody on standby who's constantly cleaning stuff for you, just running around, screens done, wash it, and it's ready by next morning, you know? It all depends on how many screens a day you do. If you're mm. 10 screens a day, then there's no point somebody stood there all day. Uh, above yeah. 50, I think I think 50 is the break even. They're on about 40 there, between 40 between, and 50. Between 50 and... Between 50 and 100 a week? Yeah. A, a push, maybe not. I don't think I've ever done 100 a week, but... So 10, 50 10 to 20 a day. Under. Yeah, it can be. Um... I've got Screen Goblin now anyway, so... Have you? Uh, yeah, his ankle's a little bit healed up. He's back on his feet. Is this your dad? So we had a little... No, no, me, uh, me bird's brother. All right. He's coming down on a Monday night. And me oh, he and fell him off was... on his bike or something, didn't he, on first day? Fell off his bike. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> didn't even make first so he didn't... day. No, he didn't come first day. But he came, he came Monday and uh, took us about three hours. Every single screen in shop, clean, drying... And then the very next morning, I coated them all. And I've just had a much more productive week because I've got screens at my disposal now rather than, shit, I need 10 screens this week. Just wash them 10 screens and then go. But you, you always you always need extra. You always end up having situations where you think, I'm sat, I'm sat here waiting for screens to dry. I could easily squeeze out a couple of one-colour jobs. It's, it, now I've got that. So my productivity this week has been so much better. Um, so that's me, my new routine for the time being. Monday nights. It's screen night. And then, so you can uh, get everything done in one night? Pretty much. Yeah. Well, the, the situation we had on Monday was the worst possible. Every single screen was used and it was sat there. Um, there were no ink in them. I sort of do that. I, I, when I finish with these six colours now, um, I'll scrape out and I'll rag and clean all the ink out before I've even took it off the press. And so it goes down ready to just be... Uh, just to have the emulsion stripped and then degreased, etc. Um, so it's only it's only the last two or three steps anyway, I guess. But that process will do for now. It's definitely an improvement. There's room there's room to improve it further. But for the first few weeks, whilst I'm it, it's better that I'm doing it as part of a process to teach and make sure all my screens are going to come back not half fast. No, it's which good. has happened in the past. No, it's, it's good. So you're only going to be playing one day a week? Unless it gets super busy. Yeah. He's got, he's got, he's got a full-time job as a mechanic. He's just, oh. coming, out, he's just coming over to help. Um, it's just help. Oh, good. So, yeah. So that'll help. What can I hear rattling? In here, are there? Well, I, think, I think it's me. I'm not sure if it was in my ears or actually in real IRL. It's IRL. Can you hear it? If I cover that microphone, can you still hear it? Why do you need a trump? It's probably my aircon. Oh, it could be, couldn't it? It just comes on. Yeah, it'll cut it out anyway. Okay, now he's got pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Had to fucking buy shorts, mate. There's no point having Have jeans you? or a jumper here. 110. Yeah. Cat. Have to take your Jordy jeans off in this weather. 110, mate. Cat. You can't even. Begin to describe how hot it is. It's uh, it's just oppressive. It never stops, and you print it in a print shop, and just everything's fucking wet. You know, you just, mm. just fucking soaking all day long. It's like you don't think about it. Yeah, you don't, and you think that's like your forearms and your hands. That's getting onto t-shirts. It's hard to manage that because that's no good. Well, one of the one of the issues we have here is a sweat part. A sweat drop. So when they're loaded, yeah, yeah. A, a little drip drips off. And then yeah. when the platysol sits on top, it, you can see it. It's a You'll sweat see drop. The, yeah, yeah. You can if fucking see it. If I accidentally spray, so I'll have a spray on to keep my Aquaflex nice and flowy. Yeah. If I accidentally spray a plastisol screen by accident, you fucking see it in the next print. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. it it's it's so, there. Same with Here's a quick question. Here's a quick question. You know when you print an Aquaflex V2, and you have a spray bottle on hand. Yeah. Do you ever just not do that? 
Is that standard? Does everybody do that? Does everybody have a spray bottle on hand? I mean, every couple of prints for just giving it a quick mist. 80%. 80%. Because I was wondering if it was being counterproductive. I did a job the other day and um, I was starting to get pinholing on the top the top colour. Yeah. And usually that's a heat thing and the air of a moisture is coming through that layer and it's almost like popping. And that's causing like a little pinhole bubble. And I thought, because it's not because this is a problem I've solved a long time ago and worked out, and it's all usually just temperature, flash temperatures. But I thought, am I excessively using moisture here? Yep. And I feel, and I think that's what it was. So I cut back on the spraying, yep. and it did it fixed it. Yeah, um, it can be. There's also self leveling right out now as well. Yeah, but we need to try that. There's a couple of new products I need try, to try. It, try a self leveling white. Um, um, Working with a as a customer. standard white yeah. across the board, yeah, try in I, the place of V2, in the place of V2. Um, so I'm working with a customer here. The reason I'm in Orlando is it's a big company who's just bought a machine, um, and they print water based on polyester right. and sportswear, and they're getting the pinhole in. And they've solved the entire problem with self leveling wine. So, oh, that's really useful information. I've got a job coming up. On sportswear, black. Yeah. So I tried the self level. Yeah. How is. <clears throat> but they're hitting multiple input? screens. White, flash white, oh, flash is... white, and then colour. Ah, oh, right, yeah, yeah. Multiple screens. So they're screens. using the self leveling, almost building, almost eye build type of stuff here. Yeah. Getting the layers until they've got a nice, even surface. Yeah. This mm. is the thing with. Uh... With a lot of water based people don't realise you, you need to put a lot more layers down. You know, you yeah. people see these these prints and go, Oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, but if you it's on an eighteen colour press with six screens, print, flash, print, flash, print, flash, print, flash, print. You know, yeah. you don't see that, but you just see mm. white on black and think, Oh, that's water based ink. That is that what water based ink looks like? Oh, I'm having some of that. Yeah. It's sort of it's not quite as simple as that. I've got a three colour so the black Black Sport polyester T-shirts. Now, my original plan is to plaster salt print them. Dye block grey, white, and then it's like a, it's like a pastel lime green and a pastel pink. Yeah. So that's, my, that's my plan here. But then I started thinking, should I water base this? In which case, I would use the dye block black. I would use Aquaflex V2. Yeah. And then, obviously, the two top colours. Yeah. And then I thought... Well, is is the white in it. the design? No, it's an underbase. So why don't you use I'd be your using wine? it to get a white. Actually, that's a fair point. I could, we, use I mean, lime as your underbase and just hit that's it a twice. Fair point. And then put pink over top at lime. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, a good Whichever's point. your lightest, whitest colour, not lightest, whitest. Whichever's your most yeah. pastel colour, pick that as an underbase instead of white. Mm, that's a really good idea, actually. Mm, I might try that. Save I've got like... Option A, B, and C for yeah. this job, hmm. and I know I can make it work. I know, I know, I know. Option A will work. I'm quite comfortable printing polyester stuff now, hmm. but I just thought maybe I can make my life a little bit easier and get a slightly better print result. Yeah, trying B and C, so we'll see. Well, let us know how it works. We want to see a show and tell. Got a deadline on it, so you'll see it at some point soon. <laughs> right, speaking of deadlines, I've got a six-color job to print. Yeah, I'm, about I need to. I need to, to do go before. And... Enjoy some Five o'clock. Orlando sunshine. See if Mickey's around. No, it's bloody lovely. A bit jealous. What's it like here? Do you know? It's hot. It's a little bit overcast. It's so, nice. Yeah. It's brings right. you down a bit, doesn't it? What temperature we got today? Let's see whether it's annoying or not. 18 degrees. You, you, everything's aircon. It's, it's the opposite of what you've got. Yeah, well, in England, everything's to, designed everything's to keep heat in. Yeah. Where you are, everything's designed to keep heat out, I guess. So today we're only going to peak at about 91, which is, how many degrees centigrade? 32-ish. It's 27 now, it's going to get to 35. 33. Yeah. So when this press is on, it's about 32, 32-ish in here. And that's enough. So like the... that's, that's, that's for the past couple of days. I've had it hotter, but like for me, I'm I'm, I'm suffering at that temperature. <laughs> the sea here, the sea temperature was uh, 102. 
the sea was 39 degrees. You get in the and sea. In hours? That, that's our temperature? In 39 in your temperature, 102. Eh? 102, which is the temperature some... they set, they tell you to set the hot tub for. Yeah, I bet. Jeez. And that was walking out into the sea. So I took my shoes and socks off, went to the beach, dipped my toes in the sea, and I'm like, it's like getting a bath. This is weird. This yeah. is really wow. odd. Yeah. So even here now, it's summer. So I've been looking into this a little bit. Um, so cold bath tap water is like between 15 and 20, on average about 18 degrees, yeah. which feels cold. When you get in, it feels really cold. Yeah. The sea at the minute will be 13, 14, 15. Which is fucking Which is still cold. cold. It's colder than getting a cold bath. Yeah. But what you're saying, it's like the opposite. It's hotter than the air temperature. Yeah. How bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> What a weird feeling. Really hot, yeah. So yeah. you're almost like, you're almost jumping out of the sea to get a get a respite from yeah, the hot to cool sea. down. You get out of the yeah. sea to cool down. You used to get in the sea to warm up to cool down. Now you get out yeah. of the sea to cool down. Yeah. Yeah, it's a strange place. But it's, you know, it, know. A lot. We're not, you don't have to go for much further south than you're in Cuba. You know what I mean? You, you are quite, quite south here. Quite tropical. Yeah, it is tropical, yeah. Probably, probably don't venture over there. No, I've, I've seen I've seen enough films about that place. It I've been to Cuba. I've, I've holidayed in Cuba. It's a beautiful place. Have you? Yeah, it's gorgeous. A resort. It's gorgeous. It's Cuba. Yeah, yeah. With an armed guard. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. No, nice place. I'm I'm quite like quite like Cuba. Oh, bloody no! Have you ever been to Skegness? I'm... What other that ones? Chapel, fucking... Chapel St. Leonard's. Chapel St. Leonard's? Is that yeah. down south somewhere? That's, that's further further south than uh, Skegness. Don't go that far. Pastel. Pastel? Yeah. What do you want to go past here for? Cleethorp. Past Cleethorps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, we went, well, I went to... Sorry, bloody hell, I went to Grimsby the other week. It's grim there. Never again, I tell you. <laughs> Just <laughs> not kidding. <laughs> Feared for my life. I've never seen so many coppers. Yeah? Like... Just knocking about, coppers everywhere. Every street you turn down, there'll be a cop car coming past you. <laughs> did you go see a band? See yeah. A... Did and you the go... security was super uptight. Who did you go see? DMAs. We've had this story. It was a brand that I printed for. Oh, yeah, yeah, years I ago. remember. Yeah, you gave it, gave it away, didn't you? Because you don't want to be successful. Yeah. I remember now. Yeah, I, was, I, lacked, I lacked a bit of ambition, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, what's the phrase? My ambition outweighed my talents. Yeah, that's it, yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's a driving one, isn't it? Yeah. Ambition exceeded right. experience, yeah. This is it. Pin badge is coming off. Oh, like that, is it? This is not symbolic. <laughs> it's symbolic <laughs> for this episode. <laughs> symbolic for this episode, but not symbolic for life. Chipper T will be back next week with a vengeance. Absolutely. Will we have a guest? Who no. knows? I'll be in Romania. Thing, we just keep you on your toes, don't we? Will I be in Romania? I'll be in New York. Oh, I'll be in Romania. I'll be in New York. Oh, actually, it might be a bit tricky if you're doing your running stuff. Will we get an episode in? I'm running Do you on want Sunday, to? so sure, um, be like... I'll be travelling home on the Thursday, so it'll have to be Wednesday, probably. We'll work it out. If not, we'll do it after you run. Yeah. And you can tell me all about it. All about it. Right, our kid. Right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think we're uh, we're done now. We've gone a, a good couple of hours for a change. Um, mm. It's, well, it's, hot, it's hot, been hot. superb. We've had a great guest on. Um, we All that remains now is to thank everybody for listening, contributing. We do have some contribution that's a little bit off, obscure. Uh, but we'll we'll figure that one out. I haven't out. read an anti Moiri out. I haven't read one out. Sorry, we'll do it next week. I know we've been a bit busy. Uh so we'll 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 try and get to the bottom of Anti Moiri. I've got my suspects now. I've got She's, some He's thrown a spanner at work by using the phrase Anywho. Something along the lines of I hope you're all right up north or something. Yeah. Which would throw our theory off a little bit. No, nah, that's, that's, that's a red theory. herring. That's no. even way north. That's a red herring. I know. I think I know it is. <laughs> it's just useless But mm. although somebody followed me on Instagram at like 2.30 in the morning here. So yeah, 
that gets rid of all the American ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. We've got half an eye on who you are. We know you Some are. might say yeah, half okay. an evil eye. Oh, an evil eye. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Right, okay. So all remains now is thank you very much for listening, contributing, and keeping us going. Me and Danny do love the feedback. If you've got any feedback, let us know. We welcome any new listeners and anybody that you haven't, you, you know that hasn't heard us yet, just drop them a link. Tell them to give us a listen. Um, we... We love doing this uh, this podcast. You, what you see is what you get. We're not um, we're not up as on ass influencers. We're dead on straight. You get what you you see what you get, uh, and uh, it, it's a bit real. Um, sometimes a bit too real. <laughs> so, if you like what you hear, you see, uh, then just drop a like, drop up a subscribe, tell your mates, tell your mum, <clears throat> and. Best of all, join us again next week. So from from me, Tony P, and from Danny D, from the Flipping Sweet Prince Girl. See you next week. <laughs> you cool fucker. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> See you there. Bye. Friday night, I'm within me right, so I want to chip in tea.